He is risen. Mm. Sadly, uh, morning while reflecting on the resurrection of Jesus, while they might seem like opposites, um, the familiar territory for me. In fact, it was several years ago, Katie and I were in Israel and we, we had the privilege of going on an epic trip, an epic pilgrimage. And we sat in front of what is known as the Garden Tomb in the alleged place where Jesus was laid, where the stone was rolled and where he was resurrected. And we came to celebrate, to reflect, to find God in that place. But my father had recently and unexpectedly just passed away. And I was there with a mixture of expectation and a very broken heart. But God met me there in one of those rare times in my life where you just know that you know that you know that you've encountered the Lord. And that's my prayer for us today, that that would happen for each of us, no matter where we find ourselves in our story today. He is risen. Well, you got to stay on your toes, you know. He is risen. He is risen. Mm. Man, we've been entering the story of, of, of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus over this weekend. And we, we had uh, Good Friday. We had a great celebration of Good Friday. And Good Friday speaks to many things, but I think the thing that it speaks the loudest as Jesus hung on that cross and breathed his last with a crown of thorns, a whipped back, belated breath, mocking around him. The thing that that screams loudest is that God loves us. That God loves us. That's what that screams above all else. I mean, it, it screams other things, but they would all fit under the category of God loves us, of God's sacrifice for us, of God's willingness to suffer on behalf of us, of God's salvation poured out through drips of blood for us, of His mercy. What is His mercy? That He would not count our sins against us, but wipe them clean. And of His grace that He would pour Himself out so that we might become who we could never become on our own. That's what resurrection, that's what the cross speaks of, the suffering of Jesus, Good Friday. And then we enter what is known as Silent Saturday. But it's only silent upon the earth. In the pits of hell, I'd imagine it was quite a raucous. It's known as the harrowing of hell. As Jesus descended into that place and loosened the chains and set the captives free. And then we enter Resurrection Sunday. And it speaks a lot of things, but if the cross speaks of God's love, then the empty tomb speaks of God's power. It speaks of God's power. And power is important. Power is important because what we deem as powerful, we are tempted to, or we have a habit of putting our hope or putting our trust, or putting our faith in, a mixture of those things. Yeah, hope, faith, and trust are sort of like a little mash together. It's hard to figure out exactly, exactly where one ends and the next one begins. They run in a pack. But whatever you deem as powerful in your life, I don't know if you've realised this, you're tempted to put your hope, faith, and trust in. And, and you can know that because whenever you feel disorientated in life, it's normally when something that you've put your hope, faith or trust in and it's been taken away or been revealed to have not been as powerful as you thought. And they've become very disorientating experiences. 
I'm sure everyone's had this one where maybe it was your parents or your caregivers or your grandparents or some sort of when you're a child, somebody who was older, who you thought powerful might have not been the word that you would use, but you put your hope, your faith, your trust in them. You saw them as an example. You saw them as a pillar. If they were okay, you were okay. And we start off in that way until our worlds get shattered. And it's not because like they're not good people and they're not worthy of honour, but we realise they're human too at some point. You know, when you're a kid, sometimes those, those people you look up to, they're, they're more than human. But then you realise they're just human too and all of a sudden that can be quite a disorientating experience where you realise, well, what, what can I rely on? What can I put my hope, faith and trust in? Because what I thought held some power turns out doesn't hold as much power as I thought. Sometimes these things don't just happen with, with people or with teachers or with church leaders or with whatever. Sometimes it happens with institutions or systems. Sometimes we, we maybe thought like, oh, like we, we, we deem the government as having like worthy of a level of trust and faith and surely they would just make the reasonable decisions that would result in a level of flourishing for people and then you realise that it's just filled with humans too. And it becomes a disorientating experience. Sometimes that same thing happens with churches. Sometimes it happens with other things that we think have power for us to be able to put some hope, trust, some faith in, to lean our lives on, if you would. For some people, that's money. In possessions, if I can just collect enough, earn enough, save enough, have enough, I'll feel good in the world. I'll feel safe in the world. I'll feel secure in the world. And maybe to a degree you will, but no amount of money is gonna help you with sickness in your body for when there is no cure or for pain that there is no cure or for a broken heart to which there are no pills that will make it better. And we find that these things were often tempted in our life to look for power so that we can put some hope, faith and trust in it. And Jesus, as he comes out of that empty tomb, says that God is powerful over everything. I mean, just think of the life of Jesus. He's already been like on this whole roll of power in the best possible sense. Like he was born to a virgin's womb. That's where he was conceived, in a virgin's womb. Like, what is that? It's power over the ability to create life. God is powerful over the ability to create life. Jesus enters His ministry. It tells us that He, he healed all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. Cancer, leprosy, skin diseases, ailments, bone disfigurements, like, uh, you know, all of it. Viral, bacterial, well, you name it. Jesus healed all kinds, all kinds. He's powerful over not just the ability to create life, but He's powerful over every sickness and disease. He's powerful over every demonic force and possession. Just that the simple speaking of words to flee, the demons flew, the forces of evil were pushed back. This is our Jesus. He was powerful in His ministry. He's proved His power over physical matter. As his feet touched the water, he was able to turn the molecules of H2O from liquid to solid without them becoming ice. They were under his command. They were under his power. The ocean is a powerful force, but not more powerful than our God. He proved his power over food. I love that one. Not just in the ability to resist it and fast, but in his ability to produce it when there's not enough. He can multiply it. He can make literally something out of nothing. He proved his power over creation or mother nature, if you would, when he spoke to the storm and the wind ceased and became but a breath and the waves ceased and the rain stopped because he's powerful over even creation. 
And he's already actually shown that he's powerful over death in a way because he at least raised a girl to life, a young girl to life, and he raised Lazarus who had been in the tomb for a few days and was stinking like decaying flesh. He raised him to life, but we know that they died again, right? So he was powerful over death in a sense, but not in a way that it would avoid death ending up having the final word. He just delayed it. But here at the resurrection of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, just in case you weren't getting the story of Jesus so far, he said, finally, he's powerful over everything over the ability to create life, over sickness and death, over creation, over all of it. He has the final word. There is not a single power in this world that is not under God's power. Isn't that amazing? If the cross screams, I love you, the resurrection screams, you can trust me. Because I have all the power. Whatever has all the power, throw your trust in that. If you're gonna throw your trust in even glimmers and whispers and shadows of power, why not throw your trust, your hope, your faith into the final word of power? I love even the order. I love you. A sacrificial, a self-giving, a suffering kind of love. And then the declaration of power, that's the sort of power you can trust. That's the sort of power that you know always has your best interest at heart. That's a safe kind of power, although safe's not probably the right word. Uh, I, uh, I was reflecting on this verse, and this is our, our verse for today in Ephesians Chapter one, Paul has three prayers for the church of Ephesus and I think they're three pretty good prayers for us too. In Ephesians chapter one, verse 15, he says, ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly. And and asking that God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, here's his first prayer, will give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might know, grow in your knowledge of God. So his first prayer is to get spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God and your relationship with God. The second prayer, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people who are His rich and glorious inheritance. So knowledge and wisdom that your life would be filled with light. And here's the third prayer. Here's our one for today. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. I pray that you would understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honour at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or just in case you were wondering anything else. Whatever you can think of, He's far above. That, and he's shown that in the resurrection, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things, all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. If you've been around this church for a little while, you'll know that I love teaching. I love taking the Bible. I love trying to explain it as best as I can, hoping, making it come alive for people. But when I came to this Easter to prepare, I felt like the Lord didn't necessarily want us to learn something new, but He wanted the resurrection power that was revealed in the empty tomb to become real in our present realities today. 
He didn't want you to go away having learned something here. He wants you to go away having experienced something here in your life. And I've got good news for you today. If you are here and you are sick, if you are here and you need a miracle, if you are here and you've got an area of your life that doesn't look like it's under the power of Christ right now, I believe God is poised, He is ready to take that reality, that historical reality of the power displayed in the resurrection of Jesus and He wants you to know that power in your present situation. Not just here, but here experienced in your present situation because what this tells us is that this resurrection power is for us. It's for us. I pray that you'd understand. Understand's not just a head knowledge. It's just like I pray that you'd know like a man knows a woman. I pray that you'd know. I lost you. <laughs> Stop daydreaming. I pray that you'd know the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in Him. The word, another way of, of translating it, I pray that you would know God's incredible power. You know that power, that same power that raised Christ from the dead. I pray that you would know that power that is towards you. That's literally like the, the Greek word here is about it coming for you, it coming towards you, it coming in your life. It's not just back there 2,000 odd years ago. I pray that you would know it coming for you, towards you, in your situation, in your reality, in your suffering, in your sickness, in your struggle, in your need for a miracle. I pray that you would know it because it's coming for you. It wasn't supposed to just stay back then it's coming for you. In Romans 8, verse 11, we get another reflection on the same thing. It says, the Spirit of God, this is where the power was at work, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit that's living in you. If you are a believer here, you've been baptised, you've given your life to Christ, you've become a disciple, the Spirit lives in you. And not only is this resurrection power wanting to come towards you, it actually wants to even bubble up from within you and become a reality in your life and bring, yes, bring life to your mortal bodies. That's like your guarantee that you will be resurrected to one day, never to die again. It's a good and living hope. It is a good thing. It is absolutely for then. I mean, you know me, I preach a lot about it's not for this life, it's for the life to come. I know we love this life, we want God to show up, but don't forget your hope is not for this life. Your hope is for the life to come. Richard's found his hope. Karina's found the whole reason they were alive, they found it and they got it. And it's sad for us, but they are partying because they were never living for this life they were living for the life to come. They had put their hope in the real thing, not just in a better self-improvement, better life now. However, with that said, we know that one day the kingdom will come in its fullness. Jesus will return. He'll usher it in. The new heavens, the new earth, there'll be no more sickness. There'll be no more mourning. There'll be no more crying. There'll be no more suffering. It sounds pretty awesome to me. I can't wait. I'm gonna have a body that's not gonna fall apart. I'm gonna have a sore back. I'm gonna be able to do whatever the body's supposed to do. Get a chance at a professional sports career all over again. I don't know. That sounds pretty good to me. Sounds pretty good to me. I look forward to it. My hope is in it. However, I know the kindness of our God. And even though the kingdom's yet to come, he loves when the kingdom breaks into our now. And I think it's okay that we can hold an unwavering hope in the kingdom come, in the fullness to be revealed. But that doesn't mean we should give up hope and expectancy for that kingdom breaking into our now in powerful, powerful ways. As David said, I will see the goodness of God while I'm still in the land of the living. 
And we're still in the land of the living and God still wants to move in our midst today. If you're willing and able, would you begin to stand to your feet? The worship team can come and join me. We need hope. You know we need hope, eh? You know when you lose hope, you lose everything. When people stop hoping and have no hope left for their lives, we know tragically that they take their lives. And I'm sure all of us know somebody who lost hope and ended up losing their life. But it's not just those things when we lose hope. When we lose hope, we abandon our callings. We forfeit our assignments. In marriages, yeah, there's a lot of reasons why people get divorced, but they could probably be boiled down to they lost hope that they could ever make it work and make it better. Hope was lost. When you lose hope, when you stop believing things will get better, you stop walking towards the better. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. But if God in Resurrection Sunday is screaming to us, I have power even over sin and death, I'm gonna throw my whole pack of faith, trust and hope in Him. If He's got all the power, He can have all my hope. If He's got all the power, He can have all my trust. If He's got all the power, He can have all my faith. And I'm not just believing in a God who will come through for me when I breathe my last. I'm believing in a God who will come through for me today. How about you? Do you believe God can break into your now? He can break into your now. Can He break into your sickness? Yes. Can He break into that business situation where you look like you're gonna lose it, it's all gonna be over? Can He break into that? Yes. Can He break into any situation that looks hopeless without the God of hope? You bet the empty tomb He can. You bet the empty tomb He can. He is powerful over all and He is seated in the highest of place. And every ruler, every authority, both on this earth and in the the earth to come and the worlds to come is under His rule is under His power. He fills all things with Himself. Whatever you're going through, He can save you. Whatever sickness you face, He can heal you. Whatever situation you're in there, you need a breakthrough. He can come through for you and you can come back here praising and telling the story of what He's done. Man, we've been seeing people healed over the last week. We've been seeing God do miraculous things in situations. And so can we believe for that now? Can we spend a little bit of time just letting God minister and ministering to one another? Does that sound all right? I know it's not that Easter, you thought you were just gonna get a little message, you have a hot cross bun, go home. But God's not done. Should we even just close our eyes for a moment? God, as we enter a time where we wanna see your resurrection power loosed in our midst, we pray that Your Holy Spirit would have free reign. Lord, we pray even right now for those that have the gifts to minister to others. Would You stir them up, anoint them afresh, Lord. Lord, for those who have needs, would You give them courage to reach out, to ask in faith. Lord, where we need more faith, would You give us more faith? Even right now, Lord.